everybody. Welcome to the CDK is the coolest thing you are not using yet. I am Jeremy Elborn. I am the tech lead for Angular CDK and Angular Material. Now, most of you in this audience are probably familiar with Angular Material by now. Just in case there's some new people who aren't, Angular Material is a project by the Angular team to provide a suite of UI components based on Google's material design specification. Now, I know, though, that many of you aren't using the CDK, or some of you might not even know about it. So CDK stands for Component Dev Kit, and it is a package of common foundations and patterns that you can use for building your own UI components. The CDK is comprised of multiple capabilities ranging from accessibility and bidirectionality, overlays, platform detection, tables, trees, and even some new stuff like drag and drop and virtual scroll. And we originally set out to make the CDK because we know more and more organizations are building their own design systems and their own suites of components. And we want people building those things to be able to take advantage of the work that we do in building common components for Angular Material. And our team has really broadened our scope in our work in the CDK. So if you've ever seen our GitHub repository, you've seen it's called Angular Material 2. And it was called this because when we started the project, we were really focused on those material design components. And over time, we, as I mentioned, we broadened our scope and are working on kind of more things. And that pesky 2 is in there. And we always want to get rid of that pesky number 2. So last week, last Friday, we actually changed the name of our repo to Angular Components. And I'm hoping that this signals that we are taking on a broader set of work for our team to work not just on material design experiences, but for any kind of tools that developers might need to build their own UI components. And we've also changed the way we've talked about our team, uh, our part of the Angular team, for years, we were considered the Angular Material team, and that's how people talked about us. That's how we talked about ourselves. But we've actually changed that terminology, and we now refer to ourselves as the Angular Components team. And I've actually been using that term over the last few days here at ng-conf, and nobody's been confused when I said that. So I think that's a good litmus test for people understanding, like, this is actually what we're doing. Uh, I want to clarify that this does not affect our, our packages or any of our APIs. We still have Angular CDK and Angular Material on NPM. This is just kind of more of an organizational thing that hopefully signals that uh, we're trying to do more than just material design experiences. And so in those efforts to make components easier to build and uh, expand uh, the features that we have, uh, last year at ng-conf, I, I talked about this is what we were going to be doing in the future right here while I was standing right here. Uh, I said we were going to work on some drag and drop features, uh, virtual scrolling features, and more enhancements to our data table. And I don't want to brag, but we totally did all of those things. And I want to show off specifically some of the drag and drop features that we've added uh, over the last year. And what better way to do that than with some live coding, which is so much more exciting than looking at slides. So I'm going to pop over to WebStorm here. And I have a totally empty Angular CLI project that I have created. It has nothing in it. All I've done so far is installed Angular CDK because I'm not installing NPM packages on stage. And so I am going to just go ahead and uh, add some CSS, because nobody wants to see me write CSS on screen, on stage. So this is some pre-made demo CSS I made. I'm just popping that in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is come into my ng module, and I'm going to add the drag drop module from Angular CDK. So we've got that. We have all of our directives available to us now. And with that, I'm going to pop over into my component template here. And I'm going to start off with something really simple. I'm just going to add a div. And I'm going to give that a class of example drag. And then I am going to just on this div add one directive, CDK drag. That's it, nothing else. Um, and so now I'm going to come over to my browser 
which has gone somewhere. There it is. I'm going to full screen that real quick. Uh, there it was. Enter full screen. OK. There is uh, my uh, Angular app being served. I have this green div that I just added here, and I can drag that around. That's great. So all I had to do was put that one directive on that div, and I can start free dragging it. Uh, however, I could just drag that right off the screen. And I don't really like that. Uh, so I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to add uh, bounds for this draggable. So I'm going to add a div here that is a bounding box. And I'm going to wrap my draggable in that. And then I'm going to add an input onto my CDK drag directive here that is CDK drag boundary. And I need to assign this to this bounding box I want to use. And so what I'm going to do here is add an ID called bounds on that. And then I can give a CSS selector here. So I'm going to give bounds. And when I come back to my browser now, there is this red dotted bounding box here. And if I try to drag the green box out, it does not let me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and there's a lot I can do with this uh, free dragging. Uh, if I pop open my autocomplete here, you can see I have all sorts of events for like drag moved, drag enter, drag exit, drop. Uh, I can lock my draggable to a certain axis. Um, but ultimately, this free dragging is of limited usefulness. There's not that many situations where you want to use it. Most of the time, you want to have some kind of drop zone, or you want to have some list you're reordering or moving items. And so I'm going to show off some of that instead. So I'm going to get rid of all that pop back to my component code, and I'm going to go ahead and add the most cliche thing, uh, a to-do list. Uh, and so I made some to-do items here that I really need to get these done soon. My time is really running out. So I'm going to go back to my template now and add a little bit of UI for these to-do items. So just a little example list and some example items. We're going to call those example box. And then we're going to repeat our items with an ng4. So we say let t of to do. Enter in our to do items. And there's our to do items. So these are all the things I have to do, but I haven't added any interaction yet. So let's go ahead and add some interaction. I'm just going to add two directives here CDK drop list on my list. And I'm going to add on each item CDK drag. If I, so the CDK drag directive says, hey, this is an item in this drag list, and it's draggable. And this drop list treats this whole list as one drop zone with knowledge that there are list items in here that can be reordered or moved around. And so if I go back to my browser now, I can pick up one of these items and start dragging it. And you can see it leaves a space where that item was. And as I move it through the list, the items shuffle around and make space for it. But when I drop this item, you're going to see that it doesn't actually persist. When I drop it, it goes back to where it was. Why is this? So the directives don't actually know anything about your data. I used an ng4 to render these out, and the directives don't know anything about where your data lives or how it's structured. You could be using just an array in your component like I am, or you could be using something like an ngrx store. And it's up to the application to perform updates to that data. So in order to do that, I'm going to add an event to this drop list called CDK drop list dropped. And I'm going to just in create a new function called drop. And I'm going to pass it this event. And so now I'm going to go implement that. I'll say drop. And this is going to take in an event of type CDK drag drop, uh, which is generic for the type of data that I'm dealing with. And so all I want to do here is shuffle the items around in my array. So fortunately, there is a helper function in CDK drag drop called move item in array. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to pass it this dot to do. And from my event, I'm going to get the previous index where the item came from and the current index where the item is going. And so now when I pop back over to my browser, I can slide these items around, and I can drop one, and there it stays. So <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and so all of that was just by adding these two directives and this event to update my data. Uh, so great, I can move my to-do items around, but I don't have any way to say that they're done. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come here and add another list here called done. And it just has one thing in it so far, and that is get dressed, which is really all I've managed to do today. And I'm going to come back to my template here, and I'm just going to duplicate that whole thing and change to do to done. So now if I come to my browser, I can still rearrange my items in my list. Um, but if I try to drag an item over here, it doesn't do anything. I can't move these items between the list. And this is because I have to connect these two drop lists to each other so that they know that they can interact. And so the easiest way to connect these two drop lists is to wrap them inside of a CDK drop list group. And if I had another element here, I would just put that directive on that element, but I don't have another element here. So I'm just going to add an ng container around this whole thing uh, because I don't want a real DOM element. And I'm going to add CDK drop list group. And so any CDK drop list inside of this group will automatically be connected. Uh, there are more specific ways to connect these lists, but for demo purposes, this does what we need it to. And so now, if I go back to my browser, you'll see I can actually drag an item from here. And while these still surfle around, I can move over here, and there's some space for my new item. But when I drop this, we're going to see a problem. I drop it. It goes right back, not to where it was, but even a different place in the other list. We don't want that. But it's pretty obvious why that's happening. Our drop handler here is just doing move item in array. It assumes we're always using the same list. And now that we're moving items between arrays, we have to have a little bit smarter logic. So we need to check in our event object. Uh, we say if event.previousContainer, so that's our, the container is our drop list, is equal to the event.TheCurrentContainer, then we want to continue doing move item in array. And if it's not, in the same. We want to transfer the items between array. And fortunately, we have another helper function for that. So transfer, transfer array item, also coming from CDK drag drop. And we need to pass this, the data, for the arrays we're moving items between. But there's one more thing we need before we actually have the information we can pass this function. We need to know which list is our data coming from and which one is it going to. And so we can have that data by going back to our template here and associating the data with each drop list. So our to-do list here, I'm going to add a binding on CDK drop list data for to-do. And I'm going to do the same thing for my done list with our done items. And what this is, lets you do is associate any arbitrary data with your drop list so that when your events are trigger, you can consume that data and make changes to the behavior of your program based on what you're getting. So now we can come back here, and we're going to call transfer array item with our event dot previous container dot data, which is going to be our array. We're going to transfer to our event dot current container dot data. And then we just need to give the indices for where those items are going to sit. So that's event dot previous index and event dot current index. And now we pop back over to our browser. And when I drag slides over here to my done list, it stays. And I can move items back. And all of this was just, we added the directives, our drop list. We added our drag. Uh, we added an event to update our data once an item is dropped. And we associated some data with the drop list. So there's a lot more settings and a lot more configuration and features for all of this CDK drag drop. I don't have time to show them all off today, so I'm going to end it there and pop back to my slides. So, before I wrap up, I did want to spend a little bit of time today talking about Angular Material itself, even though I know this talk is about the CDK. Even though we've changed our team name, Angular Material is still obviously a huge part of what we're working on every day. And I wanted to talk about one particular thing we're doing in the near future. And it involves this other library 
called MDC Web. This is an open source library that is created by the material design team at Google. And it provides a set of primitives that can be used to compose material design components. And when I say primitives, I'm talking about CSS and JavaScript assets. And we've been collaborating with the material design team over the last several months to find out how we can take the efforts that they've put into their library and the efforts we've put into our library and work together more closely. And so where today our package structure looks something like this, where Angular CDK is the foundation for Angular Material, which is then consumed in applications, going forward, it will look something like this. Angular CDK provides behaviors, while MDC Web provides some building blocks that will go into composing components into Angular Material. This is going to give us a number of benefits. So first of all, there's going to be a very consistent material design experience for everybody using both MDC Web in other form factors and in Angular Material. Because it's created by the material design team, uh, they care very much about it being on spec and staying up to date with the latest changes to material design. There's going to be less duplication of effort. So the material design team gets to focus on those really nitty gritty CSS details and Bezier curves, while the Angular team gets to focus on doing cool new Angular stuff. And we're making sure that we have the same Angular APIs and the same Angular features. So if you're using Matt Checkbox, it's going to stay the same Matt Checkbox API, same inputs, same TypeScript APIs. The internals of the component will change a little bit. The CSS will be a little bit different. The DOM structure is going to change a bit. But you're going to get a bunch of benefits from more people working on this. We have an early preview of some of these components right now in our material experimental package that Steven talked about this morning during the keynote. We have button, checkbox, menu, and slide toggle available for people to try out and give us some feedback. Obviously. This package has experimental in the name, so it's not stable, it's not production ready, it's not final. But we'd like to get feedback based on the direction we're going from the community. You can find instructions for how to use these in the readme for this package. You can see that we have some checkboxes here. Uh, this is the matte checkbox we have today, and then we can compare that to the MDC based checkbox. They look almost identical, but there are some very small, subtle changes. Uh, there's a little bit different spacing. And this is a little bit more on spec for material design. And so we're really excited about how this is going to evolve and provide a better experience for material design over the future. So that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you can find more information about the components, Material and CDK, at material.angular.io. Our GitHub repository is angular slash components. And you can find these slides at g.co slash ng slash conf19 components dash slides. And thank you again for coming. <laughs>